The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. I could have never seen what was coming for me. Hangs at the skate park, hangs by the beach. My life, it feels like. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, and Advice Show for the Modern Era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. Uh, this is your middlest brother, uh, Travis McElroy. I'm uh, <laughs> so happy to be here, and you could have listened to uh, any podcast, and uh, you chose us, so we're going to get moving here. We got a nice tailwind on the podcast uh so we're hab- hoping to end early about 49 minutes just sit back and relax uh, uh, <laughs> hey hey there frequent flyers this is griffin McElroy, and we hope you've got your tickets for the for both the flight and for the theater because it's time for a movie watch special movie for all of us uh this holiday season valentine's it's plain, day it's valentine's it's day, valentine's day. <laughs> it's planning it's plain in times day <laughs> it's plain in times plain and it's plain watch <laughs> plain watch zoom zoom Ger- gerald uh, butler has come to us from the mount he's come down from the mount he is <laughs> i hold- have a new problem <laughs> He is held. <laughs> the new prophecy for Gerard Butler. <laughs> from Gerald Butler comes down from the mount with his tablets, and etched in the tablet is one word, and the word is plain, and the other tablet is blank. Uh, he says this one's going to be plain too, or it's part. It, it says one says plain, and the other one says this tablet intentionally left blank. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is the only. And then next year, the tablet will change to a giant S. Yes, we'll just put that next to with a money sign. Like, with a money sign. With a money like sign. Jim Cameron. It's plain watch. Kitchen aliens. Travis has been sort of my boots on the ground, plain street team for a while. He's been sending us lots of promotional images. My and- favorite last week. Last yep. week, yep. Plane, the yep. people behind Plane, the Plane producers were like, uh, yeah, we're going to leak some uh, some stills oh boy. to some news. Those stills, one, a bunch of people dramatically crossing their arm, leaning or sitting at a table. Great. And looking at, I imagine, a screen where something more interesting is happening. And then another one where Jared Butler is just kind of... Pe- like looking out a plane door and it's a close up yeah. we barely see any plane in it and they're like this no will plane. get them horny for plane <laughs> what's wild is it's kind of like the Babadook because you don't actually see the plane until like <laughs> an hour and a half into the film and when it reveals the plane guys when I saw it in theaters when it finally shows the plane people lost their asses I'm people just saying fucking ballistic I'm just saying M. Night Shyamalan's back plane is his best work so yes. far the twist uh, that it ends up being uh, P-L-A-I-N yes. blew me away I had no idea no yeah, idea that was coming huge huge yeah I mean it's from the from the makers of old and mermaid and elevator come plane and I think that this is maybe I think this is Jared's best work yet yeah, for man, my uh, money. Um, I loved him in Three Hundred. I loved him in Three Hundred and One. Three Hundred and One Dalmatians. I think he's a natural talent, and I'll watch anything that he does. Any, I loved any, Gamer. Loved I loved Gamer. Loved Gamer. Loved Gamer. Loved Forget Gamer. about it. We stand. I love how many times in Gamer he was teabagging dudes. <laughs> he just kills a lot right. of men and puts his privates on them in Gamer a lot. He does it a few times in playing it. Every time he does it in playing, he looks at you like at the camera, like 
from Gamer, he says that. From Gamer, remember? Yeah. When I do this in Gamer, I love how it's all sort of one connected Gerald verse. Um, um, I have a little uh, a game for you guys. Ooh, a playing oh, game? Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, this is a playing game. The reviews are in. Okay. And uh, I'm going to read the Rotten Tomatoes snippets from these reviews. Great. And your task, yeah, if I may, is to tell me if it is a positive review, oh. if it has been excerpted from a positive review or a negative review this of seems, the movie playing. This now, seems like it shouldn't be too hard. And Justin, I'm just going to say, it'll be too easy if it contains the word soars or crashes. I will know exactly oh, which yeah. one it is. You may think so. Let's see. Okay, here's the first one. Reminded me of a picture of a beautifully drawn horse that turned into a stick figure by the end. That's... Um, that's a ne- that's a negative one. I don't think yeah, they like it. Yeah, it's gotta be negative. Okay, that is negative, correct. Good, okay, correct. good game. Good. good game so far. Uh, that's also okay. a specific like meme reference there, author. You can't be like, it reminds me of, like, just say, it's like that meme. It's like that one meme. Plain would, now th- this is from James uh, uh, Baradinelli. Okay. Oh, I love it. And he love says, plain would have been an adequate way to waste a couple hours lounging on the couch and munching salty snacks. But as a multiplex draw, not quite, even if you bring the salty snacks along. I think Jim was hungry. <laughs> yeah, I think Jim might have been hungry. Maybe Jim also doesn't understand that the th- at the theater, you can get the s- salty snacks. That, like, they have the salty snacks, everything you need sort of snack-wise. They do yeah, have it's all there. The theater, no problem. Um, I'm going to say it's a positive one, because he said not quite, which could have yeah. been worse. Yeah, I, th- I think he I think he had a, an all right time. It sounds like, honestly... It's his fault because he watched it. Because he didn't bring really the snacks along. That he well, loves. he went to like the ten thirty a.m. showing, and he was like, "I'll be fine." But then yeah. by the time the movie's done, he's like, "Oh, it's past lunch." Oh no! Yeah, it sounds like you, you can't be like, "I watched playing in a spider filled room," and so I hated it. It's a bad movie. It's whatever, man. I think I feels like also salty snacks is so non-specific. It feels like. Uh, he he's a socialite trying to remember what the common folk. Yeah, right. Movie. Yeah, it's we like, love salt. Lover, lover. Do they have? Uh, remind me. Do they eat brie and watercress <laughs> at the cinema? No, just salty snacks is what I write. Okay, this is a tough one. Oh, plain. Is Wait, was it positive or negative? Oh, it was negative. You were wrong. Oh, plain is an unattractive but viscerally effective film. There is little here to admire for the eye. Absolutely nothing for the brain, but plenty to appeal to the id. Oh, huh. damn. Wow. This is, I don't know who wrote this one, but they sound like they might be too smart for playing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's, I'm going to say a, a, that's positive. I think they actually did like it. Yeah, I, I think, think it's positive too, because they're saying like, yeah, listen, turn off your heart. Turn off yeah. your brain. <laughs> Close your heart. Turn on your Close guts. Your Close your, your heart to are going to love it. <laughs> Close your heart to Let play. plane get up in your guts. You're going to love um, it. What was that? Juice? Uh, okay, is this that is positive good, that, or negative? That one was You're, positive. Yes. Yeah. Coulter counterbalances all his brawny physicality with a grimy, utilitarian sense of humor. Moments of Gaspar skulking around corners with a sledgehammer, at least in my screening, drew bigger cheers than Butler's vein popping cockpit performance. <laughs> wow. Whoa, I would love to ever do anything artistic in my life that people refer to as a vein popping. <laughs> anything like yeah. Griffin's vein popping humor on this episode of my bim bam. Now I uh, enjoy Matt Mercer's voice work on critical role, but of course it does not compare to Griffin's vein popping <laughs> DMRE. Um, I, I, I love movies. Positive or negative? Uh, positive. I'm going to say positive I think too. I do person... like the idea of a uh, gas bar skulking around corners with his sledged hammer. It's negative. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like it. Fuck. Okay. All right, last one. And I just feel like this one really sums it up because Jordan Hoffman uh, is, uh, great work. Is, is a great critic. If you buy a ticket for this one, just know there's no first class option. Nice. <laughs> That's but good. But with moderate expectations, oh. you'll still get to your destination. A, a review I think I would love to have leveled at our <laughs> Yeah, yeah sure. With moderate expectations, we'll get you there. Well, with moderate expectations, 
everything's good. Well, I'm just saying that this is actually a very good summary of air travel experience as it exists like yes. on a very average basis, which is just like, yeah, man, li- listen, they got planes over in like Qatar that like you're sitting in a full blown like hotel room on the There's plane. Swimming pool. But right. like your average plane, you're just there to get where you're going. So right. if you just need to kill, I'm going to guess 95 minutes, you're going to love playing in that when you sit down You'll have 95 minutes to go until lunchtime. Yeah. And when it's done, 95, you'll have reached lunchtime. If you have the endurance for it, you can finish playing. That's my review of playing. Yeah. I saw it in theaters and I had an amazing time, but at a very basic level, if you sit there, it has the whole movie in playing. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole, the whole movie's there. They don't. Yeah. They're, you're not going to not finish playing if you try really hard. I'm going to say that that's a positive, Justin. Yeah, positive, huge, uh, huge for playing. Yeah, positive. Jordan, Jordan's right. Justin, can I guess what the percentage on Rotten Tomatoes is? Ooh, for that's the critical? I love that. I love that tiebreaker. Critical. I'm going to say like 58. percent I was going to say 40 percent crit. Can you guys do it in terms of positive? Because that's the way it all. Like, how much? What percentage positive? I don't understand what I'm you're saying. I'm saying 58% positive. The Rotten Tomatoes score, which is expressed in a percentage of always, positive reviews, 40% positive. 58% positive. Hey, guys, get ready for liftoff because this one's at 75% positive. Let's go, baby. Hell yeah, man. Let's, Let's go. fucking go. Gerard, you're back, baby. You're back, baby. Do you remember you called me last night and you're like, I don't think I'm back, but you are back. You're back Drawing now, back. bud. You're soaring. You're flying you're high, You're flying baby. like your titular plane, plane two, planes. Train, truck, hey, Travis, your haircut boat. looks good. Hey, thanks. Like this is the first hair, time I've seen it in camera. It looks nice. Yeah, thank you. I said, give I, me the Sonic, baby. And they did, did you, <laughs> did you, when picking the baffling for your, your little sound prison that yeah, you've yeah, made yeah. there, did you make sure that it is the same color as your hair and yeah. it kind of does make you look like a woolly willy man? Yeah. Who, a man with yeah. a sort of divot. Yeah. I just... I wanted people to be able to green screen it or a purple screen it easier. That's why I also purple screen like a your purple hair out. Okay. Thing. Well, I'm I've been trapped in this cube for a long time, and I'm yeah. so bored. You yeah. are with all the purple. It looks kind of like pickup artist camouflage. Yeah. Like you're trying to hide in mysteries, mysteries. <laughs> like you dress to blend into mysteries curtains. Well, the thing is, is I made the decision. Uh, that I got fish and having fish tank is basically saying, and the sound quality in here will be terrible forever. So I have to stay trapped in my little box here, but my fish get to live in their little box. Oh no, actually, <laughs> <laughs> only now do I realize I've trapped us both in boxes. How metaphorically yeah. painful. Guys, I just Googled plane bloopers <laughs> <laughs> and it brought up, don't Google that. No, it like, brought up some, what I would describe as real life plane bloopers and those aren't not lighthearted funny. fun well then uh, they shouldn't call them bloopers bloopers inherently implies lighthearted fun you're not like oh there was a plane blooper today we lost yeah. 75 souls 75 soul did you recover the black box from the plane blooper <laughs> someone made <laughs> now what, what a fucking bozo <laughs> And he's uh, survived by his wife and kids. (laughs) 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 Fucking Sully is like the only one who can say like, yeah, guys, I had a real plane blooper up there. (laughs) Every every other tragic plane-based whoopsie cannot be called a blooper except for Sully's. The problem is that the bar that Sully the film had to cross is that it had to be so good Mm -hmm. and well acted it made you forget how fucking funny (laughs) the whole thing is. It's hysterical. Birds flew in and he landed in in the lake. (laughs) Yeah, that's not where it's supposed to be. So that's uh, that's plane. Get there. Day one. There. Get there day one, six days ago. This is not plain. No. This is an advice show. Uh, So we're going to help you, the people of the world. I'm going to see Cats the Musical next month, meow. I'm desperately trying to figure out what to wear. Is it weird to wear wear anything cat-themed? Is it weird not to wear anything cat-themed? Surely I'm not supposed to go in costume, right? Well, that's from Costuming Conundrum in Chicago, and this is an excellent, excellent question. 
Really good. Thank you. This is perfectly targeted, right down the middle. You can't say not supposed to go in costume. Like, as long as your costume is, let's call it what it is, tastefully fitted, they'll let you in. Yeah. They'll let you in. They won't turn you away. I think there is, no. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, if you think about that critically for more than a second. Okay, I'm gonna stand. I can't. I've gone down that road before and I know what happened. Travis has to sit. Hachi machi. See? My my globe fell over, my my spaceship Earth fell over. When we stand up, bad things happen. Justin's crypto is spilt all over the damn floor. Losing value as we speak. Um, I don't want this crypto. This crypto's dirty. <laughs> is this, okay, what is this, so, M&M stuck to it? Gross. Uh, you, there is definitely a level of of close approximation of cat costume. Yes. Where, at which point, the ushers will have to say, this is confusing. People are really weirded. People think for sure they are about to get swept up in interactive theater. Well, and you work and the, really it's hard. point for this if you've never seen cats yes, live. Yes, good point is that it is an element in most productions that the cats will come into your fucking space yeah. that you paid for. They, like, come down the about. aisles and shit. Yeah. yeah, and what if the ushers are worried that you're just gonna, like, seamlessly blend in? And there's like, yeah, I got an aisle seat. And it's like, okay, but you're dressing. Yeah, no, 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 don't worry about it. Wait, that seat's empty. Which one of them is it? Ah! Literally nothing would be better, though. If someone did that, I... You, how how long do you think you can make it before someone's like, that one's not hitting right for me? <laughs> that yeah. cat around? Yeah, nah. sure. Uh, that cat's licking, and by cat I mean man and furry man is licking their butthole right next to me. I don't think that they're part of the pre- the touring production of Cats. Now, Justin, you uh, have probably experienced this in your love of Disney, but could you perhaps do Cats Bounding? Cats Bounding is good. Right? That is good. You do buns that look like cat ears. Yeah, That's you maybe cool. have a print vest under, I mean, listen, you could do Magical no, Mr. No, 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 let's finish the sentence. Like a, a patterned vest underneath your, your tuxedo. But then like I realized- jag- Jaguar. Right, but then perhaps. I realized you could just do a Magical Mr. Mistopheles bounding so fucking easily. He's a tuxedo cat. He's, yeah, or okay, you, you start in a regular tuxedo, and then as the production's going on, you add a little, a few little twisted details that get you to full Mistopheles. Like face Wait, paint. So you cat bound in the, th- like, while Past everybody else is trying to enjoy the show, you are applying spirit gum. Covertly. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Tastefully. Yeah. That would be probably the most <laughs> fucked up, viscerally upsetting experience for the person <laughs> sitting next to you to just like look over every once in a while and be like, I, hey, Margaret, I swear to Christ, the guy sitting next to me <laughs> is changing. He's more and response. more old Deuteronomy every time I look I over. I can't catch him doing it because he's so discreet. He's really fast. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. So it. we're going to have to ask you to leave the theater. Is it because my cell phone rang in Act 1? No. No. <laughs> um, no. Nope. We were going to let that one go, but then you added the whiskers. The problem, sir, is you are anamorphing, <laughs> and, it's, and it's, sm- it's making a smell That's that an an- people are upset you about. You think there's a... You think there's an anamorph smell? Yeah. 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 Well, that's, Justin, because okay. there's a the mass loss. are empty. <laughs> if you turn from a human to a hawk, that mass has to go somewhere, Justin. Yes. Otherwise, you have a hawk that weighs like 180 pounds, and that thing's never going to fly. So that mass has to be released as a mass gas, if you will. Now, yeah. when you turn back- Is it gaseous, or is it sort of a liquid- a little Goop, bit of both. Just, a little okay. column A, a little column B. It's ectoplasmic and orgasmic. And then when you turn back, you have to absorb that mass from somewhere. I, this what? is just science, Justin. Yeah. Let me hit you guys with an idea. Okay. This is my bold vision for the future of cats. The cat, the house cat, or the street cat, is one of nature's most chaotic animals. You can't, you can't control what a, what a kitty cat does, right? I think people should be allowed to go to productions of cats mm-hmm. dressed up I, as I agree so far. Dressed up as cats. And they should if they can get on the stage, they should be allowed to stay there 
and kind of just act like a kitty cat while the rest of the play happens around them. And then if you and the audience are like, I'm trying to enjoy the show, but there is a, a, a man dressed up as a cat, doesn't look quite exactly like the rest of the cats, but he is crawling around and sniffling and meowing every once in a while. I think that that sort of only lends itself to the authenticity of the production because it's like, yeah, not not hurting cats is like an idiom. You can't expect every cat on that stage to be doing the right thing. Yeah, now yeah, Griffin, they're doing their own thing. As a theater owner, I will agree to this proposal on one condition. Go ahead. Allow me to have in theater security dressed as dogs. And if they catch oh, a cat good. approaching, they can like bark and the cat has to like hiss and screech and run away. Yeah, or alternatively, the director of the show, who is going to become a character sort of our town style, should be allowed to go on stage at any point with a spray bottle and just sort of spritz anyone who's wandered in from the crowd dressed up kind of like a kitty cat, but not exactly like a kitty cat. And if they're doing really good, they get a little collar with a bell on it, and that means you're invited to stay. You're part of the oh, show Oh, that's now. good. That How fucking cool would it be? How fucking... Okay. <laughs> I'm okay, ready. how fucking cool would it be if every time you went to a production of Cats, you didn't know who was going to get taken up to the heavy side layer? Oh shit! Because it could be Grizabella, right? Yeah, it yeah, could right, be Grizabella. Right. It's it's usually going to be Grizabella. Usually. usually, most of the time, I would say nine 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 times out of ten, it's going to be Grizabella. But if a kitty cat wanders in off the street, off the crowd, off the audience, and really captures the audience's hearts and minds. They should be like, uh, uh, you know, and the heavy side layer winner of this contest is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt the cat. And Matt the cat gets to go up in the balloon and the rest of the cast is going to be like, <laughs> and Grizabella's going to be like, I, maybe tomorrow. What, am I, what do I do? What am I supposed now, to do? Now Grizabella simply dies. Grisabella just kind of stands there and just kind of does like a like the Ashley Simpson dance. Like I'm not sure what I don't have blocking. I don't have block. My blocking is the balloon that goes up. Uh, I don't have anything past that. Um, so, but I are you kidding me? I don't like cats. I would go see it every night if I knew there was a chance that you'd get to go to the heavy side layer. I mean, I could okay. Now, Justin, I would, that's I a good point, never. Griffin. How many times would you have to see the show before you're like, I felt it's comfortable. My time. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I'm going to go to it. Excuse I'm gonna, me. I've earned it. I'm My first time that I try to rush the stage, I'm going to get sprayed hard. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm not going to have the kind of uh, cat acumen required. <laughs> you're, out, you're out in the lobby on, like, your 20th viewing, and you see somebody else come in, and you're like, oh, first time? And your costume is just, like, soaked from all the sprayings that from never all the spray, dry. Yeah. They use, like, Vaseline I, spray. I'm not, even gonna, I'm not even going to hit the boards. I'm going right. to approach the... I'm going to approach approach the door that they make you walk through, which I hope has a metal detector <laughs> and security measures just to keep the cast safe, uh, the cats safe. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm, my first time I'm going to show up just with kitty cat ears on and just like regular clothes and they're just going to shake the no-no can and I'll go back to my seat. But after a dozen times, two dozen times, five dozen times, I'm going to make the stage. I'm going to do what needs to be done to get up in that balloon. Well, that's threatening, Griffin. You can't say... I'm going to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Maybe, uh, I, I was thinking like follow spot just like swings around in the audience every night and it lands on somebody and then that person gets to die at Cats. <laughs> like you get to come up and Whoa. die at the show Cats. Now that's <laughs> interesting, Justin, because when I was thinking <laughs> no. of a, an audience member being taken to the heavy side layer, I wasn't thinking that they would be sacrificed Dest destroyed it's planned though yeah and that's fun because then every every night when i come home from cats my wife embraces me deeply. <laughs> so happy that you've made it back <laughs> this was something fun that i came up with and i feel like you guys have perverted it in yeah. a way like i don't want to go to cats and be afraid that i could die but be 100 percent certain i will see an actual human death <laughs> that's off stage actually yeah you won't it's see off, it. It's off stage. Okay. How was Cats? It was great. The music <laughs> was great. The production, excellent. There were a lot of, a lot of people rushed the stage. The spray bottle was <laughs> spritzing like mad. The implied cynicide was 
not my favorite part Dude, of this show. I get, you know, I, I you think people ever say, I've been thinking about getting into my brother, my brother, me. Oh, cool. Do I, should I listen to the previous episodes? Like, no. You should watch Cats. If you, you haven't yeah. seen Cats, you need to see Cats to get it. But let, uh, you guys got one another question? Or? I mean, I do all have a wizard. I have a wizard here with me. Spit it's it not out. The usual, it's not the usual one. Oh, well, that this is all, you is, know. Is, is, new is you, new you. His name renewal. is Zan, Zandagorp. Uh, oh, I know him. He sucks, but he did bring a cool okay. uh, wiki how here. Actually, Michelle brought it. Thanks, Michelle. It's how to win a dance-off. Dance-offs can be very stressful and tiring, yes. but they're equally fun, too. A dance-off is an informal competition between two dancers or groups who must progressively dance better than their opponent. Anyone can challenge you to a dance-off at any point in time, but sometimes they pass for competitions. Don't know what that means. Dance-offs are just about showing attitude, improvising, grooving to the music. Now, that is, okay, you can't say it's an informal event and then, like, in the next sentence say... Sometimes they're like full blown competitions because I would argue a full blown competition where dance teams perform for judges is not that's an not informal important. event. No, that's I mean, speech. but nobody's wearing tuxedos. No, and I Justin guess is that, well, you don't know that, J Man. Can you tell that's me true, that's but true? You're not required to. It's still not a formal event. Okay. Justin has brought us to our first point here, and that is being prepared. Look decent and be ready at all times, Even although you bed? aren't. Exp- Although you aren't expected to wear clothes saved for performances, I don't know what that means. It's best if you stay prepared and wear nice clothes as you can be challenged at any point in time. Gosh, that's got to be exhausting, huh? Well, Griffin, so you to chose it. to get into the dance life. So if you get yeah, caught. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how I raise the PVP flag for dancing uh, to just let, let people know. Like when I'm going on the Metro, Please if someone sees me, kids. they're like, he, that me. guy's ready. That guy's ready to well, dance. Well, you're always wearing tearaway pants and jazz shoes. Yeah. Uh, I so that so. symbols, like everybody sees that and they're like, he's fucking ready. And the first time you ever, well, not a lot of people know this, first time you ever do any dance move in your entire life, you've entered into potential right. competitive dance circuit. That's right. Right? Everyone can feel it ripple through the world of like, oh, Griffin just like did like a jazz square. Let's right, get him. you have to not dance for six months. Yeah, to wow. be cut to get to lower the flag. That's what John Lithgow in Footloose was trying to do. He was trying to save his town, not yep. save their souls. But they were getting challenged to dance battles left and right, and he was like, "We're losing so many dance battles. We've lowered the credit rating of our right. whole town. We're broke. Everybody, stop dancing, please." Hey. Can we, Griffin, I, I don't want to interrupt your flow, but can we talk about John Lithgow for 10 minutes? 10 minutes? No. <laughs> That's a okay. big ask, J-Man. No, That's one-sixth of the show. It's five minutes. <laughs> okay. No, no, you can't agree. I need Griffin to say, Justin, it's okay for you to interrupt my I bit. mean, right now what we're doing is bargaining of how much Lithgow time I'm going to permit you. And I'm, yes, I really true. don't want to do any more than like two minutes. Can you get it in two? Can you get it done in two minutes? Yeah. Okay. What do you need get to get done. done? Two, oh. I can get it done in two minutes. Okay. I'm watching this show called The Old Man. That's about Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow. One is a, an ex CIA agent. One's like a government operative, and they're squaring off against the each name other. of the show is The Old Man. The Old Man. There's more, but there's a few uh, there, of them. Well, a lot of us are wondering. It's kind of like my brother, my brother, and me, where a lot of us are wondering who which the one's old man the old man. Okay, is okay, but. In the show, there's flashbacks, and the actor Christopher Redman is in there playing young John Lithgow. I gotta look it up. And he's fucking nailing it. Okay. It's wild, okay? It's One minute has John elapsed Lithgow. of okay. your Lithgow time. So I was watching The Old Man um, with my broth and my chair, and I was watching The Old Man, and then I... Uh, I started thinking, man, I'd love to see this guy in like Harry and the Hendersons or one of the classic Lithgow roles. And then I was thinking, like, if we could, we could reboot film franchises, right? Why can't we reboot acting careers? Human beings. Yeah. Why can't we have another John Lithgow just doing it again? Yeah. So, Third Rock from the Sun. Right. Again, it, you don't have to reinvent the show. No. you've got it, but re- just it's rebooted it's a, lift down. So shot like for same, shot. same, yeah, shot for shot, same scripts, same different, sets. Ca- diff- but this time we got, this time we've got same people. 
Oh, wow. okay. See, I was going to say cuz we have an opportunity, we could get Ita- we could get Italian Stewart in there. Sure. We could get um sure. I don't remember who else was in that pro- well, it was in Third Rock. I believe there was Joseph a Joseph Gordon Levitt? Joseph Gordon Levitt was there. Wayne Knight? Christian Johnson? Christian Johnson. I just googled Third Rock from the Sun. The top asked question is, how good was Third Rock from the so Sun? Good. <laughs> so good. It's a very good. So Excuse me, good. I think we forgot a little lady named Jane Curtin, a yeah. megawatt talent uh, yeah. lifting Shining up Third Star. Rock from the Sun. Okay, so that's just one thing, though. That's just one of the projects. That's just that one of the get. projects that we can start again when there's a new lit gal right. starting over. The possibilities are endless. That was, I think, like two and a half minutes and, and I'm I'm okay with that, but I would like to get to the second point of this wiki, Howard. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, yes. Wear a few accessories to complement your look. Do not go overboard. A small bracelet and earrings or pendant necklace and a ring will be good enough. You don't want anything that's going to whip around and hit you in your own face. That's unless that's important. like unless that's like part of it. Like well, when I do a dance of any style, I like to wear a big pendant that I can kind of swing like around. swing yeah. around, and then like it looks cool. It weapon. Um, wear makeup. Makeup like, makes you look and feel good. Getting challenged for it. Di- but did I do this before I leave the house? Yes. Or is it like, I'm ready to battle you, and I'm like, give me 20 minutes. If you stay ready for a dance battle, you don't have to I need to put on my ready. cat costume. <laughs> I need to get feeling feline and fancy free. Focusing towards winning. One, learn to improvise. This is the first step of learning to win. Improvising in dance is to move to the music without doing any choreographed steps. Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah. You might not, remi- remember. You might not have a choice of music. This means that any generic music will be played, and you have to put your moves out there. It could be jingle bells. Could be jingle yeah. bells. You could have to. You ha- may have to do some. It could br- be that we love the subs j- Quiznos jingle. It could be the Quiznos song that you have to b boy to. Yeah. It could be a Step funeral two, dirge. Could be a funeral dirge. <laughs> I'm saying the best. I'm just gonna put it out there. The best. Uh, dance accessory you can have Jameer Koi hat could be corn could be this I'll stop for this now here's what I've discovered sorry let me finish my point reinforce Jameer Koi hat that you can do a full headstand on and it doesn't collapse that's huge now Justin go on I messed up the sliders on my board so I couldn't hear the colorful buttons and then when I fixed the sliders Griffin was on the besties yesterday when I did this the that song was our that sound was already playing. It was playing non, it had been playing nonstop for, for ten hours. Yeah. Not ten hours for weeks. <laughs> My soundboard <laughs> has been like, okay, J Man, okay. It's just been please. it's been crying out from please. a locked prison <laughs> deep just in the please. silence. <laughs> you can hear you can't hear it? Okay, I'll just keep playing it over and over Free again. Free me from this okay. hell. Okay, step one, learn to improvise. Step two, learn to dance. <laughs> Wow, no now, no I would have flipped those myself. Yeah. no way. <laughs> Before you participate in any battles or dance-offs, you must know how to dance. If you don't know how to, read How to Dance. This is... <laughs> a book! I, is that real? This is not linked anywhere, so I don't know what How to Dance is. I'm assuming it's a WikiHow article of How is to Dance. Is it capitalized? Yes. Justin, okay. do not Google How to Dance. No, I'm searching for a book called How to Dance. Uh, okay. Uh, it's if, all very specific styles, like how to dance bachata. Right, okay, step three is practice. Now let's move on to part three of the article, being positive. Being positive is necessary and it keeps you healthy as well as strong-minded. Important. Step one, meditate. Bet you didn't see that coming. I did not keep your grades up. <laughs> keep your grades up. Step two, keep your chakras up. Step three, smile. You don't know when those nerves can make you frown or even give you panic attacks. Smiling in my experience when panicked about uh, some sort of uh, uncomfortable situation, smiling is usually not medicine for the panic attack that I'm having. I use, Whenever I'm sort of deep in a panty, I can't just be like, this will fix it. Yeah. I would say if you made that face, though, you're really going to get in the head of your opponent. That's <laughs> true. true. Intimidation wise, yeah. Um, and then step three, also impossible. Avoid thinking of what could go wrong. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Oh sure, Wiki Al. Now yeah. this is this is what I've been waiting on 
to fix my to fi- get my mind right At is this to prepare point, though, to dance off. Yeah, if you're oh, meditating, life, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. life psychiatrists hate this one trick. Yeah, where you just don't think about just the bad don't things think that can happen. If you're in touch with the dance force like this, right? You're yeah. improvising. You're learning to dance. You're meditating. You're staying positive. That thing of like, don't think what's going to go wrong. You won't be able to because you're so present in the dance force moving forward. Right. That you're not thinking about the past. You're not thinking about the future. You're, you're pure, purely in the dance. You are the dance. Right. What if I learned to improvise so well that I don't need to learn to dance? Well, oh. that's why you know that's I mean? step one. Speaking what of if that. it's all vamping? It's just all. Where did you <laughs> learn that? To... They'll say, and you'll say, it was just the way my body wanted to move. And they'll I be like, holy body. shit. Yeah. Um, here's the last part, and it's an important one because it is dancing during the battle. Part one. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Dance. Listen. Stand there. Look at them. Stillness. Them. Find it um, in stillness. That would be terrifying. First loses. Okay. Step one, put out your best moves. If you have tricks, flips, or anything unique, such as tutting, even during a ballet battle, these can help you win. Ballet battles, are those real? I have not seen Black Swan. Now, Despite- is this right off the bat? You're just using it like you're coming out the gate, using all your utility? Like- y- yeah, but that's not enough, Travis, because step two, and this is what it says, make facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't say like cool facial expressions or cool dancing facial expressions. Just it's just any... like ah, like hey, <laughs> just any sort of facial expression is going to get you there. Uh, fa- making facial expressions is obligatory if you are set to win. They express and to be more human. Than moves. <laughs> and to be human, your face is going to be doing. It something. does stuff. Your face, yeah. occasionally, even if it's just stubbing your toe, you're going to yeah. make a face. Look your opponent in the eye. And this is why the the this is the first step in Cha Cha Slide, uh, is they do say they do say like, bef- hey everybody, it's me, the creator of the Cha Cha Slide. Before you get into this, Johnny Cha Cha, it's me, Johnny Cha Cha. Stare into your opponent's soul and prepare. Be ready to take their life. Now that's a great point, Griffin. Too too rarely do we address. A lot of people say dance partner, but I see yeah. even when you're dancing with someone as a battle, it's right? always who's leading. Well, who's yeah. winning? You know what I mean. So this step is my favorite step in the whole article. Step four: add in a few moves that include your opponent. You can. Mm. You can. You. You two can. Do a split in between their legs. Flip over their back and take them by surprise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Fucking cool. Do cartwheels around them. I I will, thanks. Use the entire floor for doing a few tricks, leaving them no space to dance. Catch the audience's attention. That's great. They're, like, getting ready to do something, but you're already there. Just... <laughs> and then they're like, okay, well, I guess I'll get on the ground, and, but but you're on the ground underneath. <laughs> you're already <them>. there. <laughs> and then they lose and they go home and they go to climb in bed with their wife to tell them what, what a horrible day. And you're already there. You're in bed with their wife <laughs> and you're just. <laughs> and you're in the mirror dancing like, back at them wherever they go. They're like, I have to poop so, I have had to poop <laughs> since our dance battle. You can't, I'm on your toilet. I'm on every toilet. You'll never be, um, uh, do arm or body waves around their body. A few competitions may not let the dancer touch the other dancer even slightly. If this is the case, do not go too near, but mock them with a bit with stronger dance moves. I, I, I can't, I can't even participate in dance battles where you're not allowed to touch and fully yeah. hit, hit. And flip over. Yeah. Hit, flip over and kick and attack and hurt your opponent. I'm actually um not like legally not allowed to participate in dance battles anymore because my signature move used to be this thing where I would do a bunch of like flips towards a person and then I'd stop with like my hand like a half an inch away from their nose. And oh, one cool. time I was planning it and I did all my math homework to get the geometry right and the yeah. person leaned forward a little bit and I smashed their whole face in and oh, I no. killed I killed them on the spot. But did you but and you but you I mean, I won. I won. But at what cost? The cost of my immortal soul. And I spent 25 years in Folsom Prison. um, And I wrote a a famous song about it. Um, Wow. But I was not hearing about all this. Yeah. Well, I'm not proud of it. But I wrote a song about it. But I'm not proud of it. But But listen, this is the last step. Don't be disheartened if you don't win. Winning isn't everything. Trying your best is. It's a new experience. You killed a guy. It was your first. Yeah, it was your first kill. It's a new experience. And sometimes you will be given critiques to work on. Hey, next time, 
Don't kill that guy. Well, you can't kill that guy yeah. again. Don't They're kill gone. his twin brother. Don't kill his twin brother. And They're it's going to be hard because his twin brother's going to be coming for you. You always have space to do better. Just don't lose hope. You always, the sun will come out tomorrow and you kill the guy. The sun will come out tomorrow. Well, you got better grades. Yeah, you got grades up. You got your grades. Your grades are doing great. Your parents are there. This is why you need the grades to stay up because you need something to cling to. Yeah. Really? If it doesn't work out the way you want, you need something on the yeah. burner. And you can always yeah. do grades. Yeah. And while I was in prison, I got my law degree so that I could help uh, people who didn't kill people in dance battles but were framed for it. Yeah. I helped them get out of prison. Not like you. You no, did I, it. I did. And that's what you tell your clients. I know I how to help it. you. Because I've been there. Not exactly there, because I killed my guy. I killed my guy. <laughs> my 100%. Guy. It was open and shut. Travis, my guy you are, you are You are hoving treacherously close to pitching a a freebie <laughs> a drama series starring Simon Baker as the, <laughs> the dance crime dance yes. criminal. Hey, please, please. Simon Baker please. should work more, as far as I'm concerned. However Strike much he's working freebie. isn't enough. I want to watch it. Uh, you know, f I love freebie, but you know what's not free? What? Money. I was going to say this podcast, but it is it definitely, absolutely, yeah. demonstrably is. Um, But we do have ads. Let's go to the Billy. But that's the Sawbones one. Let's go to the Billy. Let's go to the Billy bo Bob. Take it, Billy. <laughs> Let's go to Billy Bob's Wonderland. Hey, guys, it's me, Billy. Do you brush your teeth? <laughs> I, I don't. You should, you fucking gross <laughs> hell. <laughs> Anyways, the money zone. <laughs> We here love Stitch Fix. We've talked about it many, many times. But when I tell you, oh, as much as I like getting close through Stitch Fix, which I do, I love we signed BB up for it, and BB gets close through Stitch Fix, and they're some of the cutest shit I've ever seen. She got this pair of pants that had heart, like sequined hearts, those you know, on the knees, Cute. and when you swipe it up one way, it's white hearts. You swipe Cute. it down the other way, rainbow hearts. I love it. It's so great. She is on a kick of like getting the sequin stuff that like you swipe your hand across and it changes colors and Stitch Fix is nailing it at all fronts. So if you already have your game right and you want to get it for somebody you know or like somebody in your house or you don't have your, your fit game right, then get it through Stitch Fix because they'll get you all set up. And it's easy to get clothes that fit you um, because you're going to tell them what you like, where you want to wear it, what your price range is, all that stuff. And then with those choices in mind, they'll send you like the perfect fit, handpicked just for you. And anything that doesn't fit or that you don't like, you don't have to pay for it. You only pay for what you, what you keep. And it's incredible. It taught me about good jeans, getting pants, jeans that are comfy and fit well, and that just get softer and better with each wash. I love them. And right now, Stitch Fix is offering my listeners $20 off their first fix at stitchfix.com slash my brother. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother for $20 off today, stitchfix.com slash my brother. Uh, you gotta keep your house clean. Uh, I'm trying. I know, but if you're me, it's like really infringes on your mood. Uh, but I don't like to clean. I just like having a place that is clean. But Blue Land makes it a little easier and makes it something I feel a little better, bit better about. This is a company that is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and the planet. What does that mean? Well, you get the container from Blue Land, and then you get refills for the container that aren't going to like clutter up a landfill with a bunch of empty bottles. And the the containers are really nice. They look nice on your countertop. They look sturdy um, and, and something that you will be proud to have visible in your home if that's the way you uh, you want to do it. And uh, they don't ship a lot of water. You know, it's uh, most of their uh, – a lot of their products, not all, are in tablet form and you put them into water and then it creates the cleaning liquid or, Ooh, or what uh, have uh. you. Yeah, I know. The refills start at just two twenty five, and you can have a subscription or – Buy in bulk if you want that to be even cheaper. So I, give it a try. They, they also work great. If, if, if I could uh, say that as well, I think that's important. You, you know, just a, a I'm sure a they change. want you to say, I bet they are yeah, stoked I bet they love that you that. said that. Uh, it's just a little change, but it, it's your little step you can take towards sustainability and uh, have a beautiful, beautiful cleaning experience. Okay. To get 15% off your first order, Go to blueland.com slash my brother. That's 15% off your first order right now 
when you go to blueland.com slash my brother. That's blueland.com slash my brother. Dear Reading Glasses, it's been years since I've been able to read. I missed it so much, but I had no idea where to start. I felt so overwhelmed. But thanks to your show, now I'm back to enjoying books again and feeling like a reader. Love, Sarah. Yeah, that's an email we actually answered. Okay, maybe not that email specifically, but one just like it, because most of our listeners are named Sarah. (laughs) We're Reading Glasses, and we're here to solve all your reader problems. We give advice, help you find books you love, and discuss reading without making you feel pressured. No matter what you read or how you read it, we'll help you do it better. Reading Glasses, every week on Maximum Fun. Are elephants right-handed? What's the middlest size in the universe? What is the history of fan fiction? Let's find out together on our show, Let's Learn Everything, where we learn anything and everything interesting. My name's Caroline, and I studied biodiversity and conservation. My name's Tom, and I studied computer science and cognitive blah, 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 blah. Mm, Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and my name's Ella, and I studied stem cells and regenerative medicine. On our show, we do as much research as you would for a class, but we don't get in trouble for making each other laugh. And we get to say, f***. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not in the trailer. <laughs> Subscribe to Let's Learn Everything every other Thursday on Maximum Fun. Justin, how about another question? I'd love that, Trap. I was scrolling through my Instagram messages to see that my landlord had sent me a clip from Ted 2 on Instagram. Yeah. Specifically the one where they almost run run over the Star Wars cosplayers. Ah, yes. One of my favorite favorite scenes from the film Ted 2. I gotta watch Ted 2. Again. I have a list of my favorite funny parts from Ted 2 and my favorite <laughs> sad parts from Ted 2. And I keep it in a Google a Google spreadsheet that is publicly available if you want to. It's got time codes and everything. This is uh, this one's on the funny side and the sad side. Now, Griffin I, has arranged Griffin at every Christmas will have us gather around and watch his fan edit, which is just the reordered yeah. scenes of Ted Two in a way From that he thinks best has to a worst, which yeah. is yeah. weird. Well, I have is it for emotional impact this year, Griffin, or best to worst. What are you thinking? Uh, well, if you go to my website where I have arranged all of the movies uh with moments and then didn't pay for hosting and it is being squatted on no i do have i do have this website if you could let (laughs) me finish my incredible joke uh that i have all the time codes from all of my favorite funny jokes in uh ted and ted 2 and million ways to die in the west is called mr grin uh because these (laughs) moments from these films will make you smile uh that's a guarantee put a smile on your face i also have a website i've uploaded all of my favorite ted two clips on and i called it youtube but after i put all those clips on yeah. i was like it's still feeling a little empty out yeah. here so i'm gonna open the floodgates to other ted two fans yeah um and it kind of got out of hand a I little bit so. yeah now what i've done is i've gone on tiktok and uploaded the entirety of ted two in 30 second clips yeah uh so you can just watch just swipe through those in order to get the timing right so it flows but you can work through all of Ted 2 30 yeah. seconds at a time. It's the best way. It's the only way to watch. Let's finish the question, though. I don't really know what to say to this, as it would be the second message he sent me after, would you be interested in renting a room here 1.5 years ago? That's from Confused Student in Long Beach. Well, Ted 2 transcends intention or me. Like, he saw this and probably just sent it to everyone in his contact list. Like, I don't think that this was specific to you. Do you think you. he pushed a, you think Instagram lets you push a button for Ted and, 2? And send a clip of Ted 2 to everyone you know? I That's mean, too much power. It's That's funny. too much power. We don't usually do this on the podcast, but I'm going to watch a brief clip from Ted uh, from Ted 2. Okay. Now, I don't know if it's just from, by yourself. Yeah. Or what's I mean, the he's really Justin just doing up. the Peter Griffin voice. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. That you, I never really thought about it before. In the oh. many times, so it looks like they almost hit the st- the Star Wars cosplayers. It's different. There's a lot of nuance. Yeah, I feel like Griffin's not encapsulating the fact that it's a talking teddy bear, and how inherently funny that is. We had a meeting once with with uh, um, the the people, the Family Guy, Seth's people over at Family Guy nice. Productions. 
They're very nice. And I was really scared because I don't remember everything I've said about different stuff. You know, I feel like if if Seth can razz people, we could maybe do a little razz at ourselves. You know, we all had a lot of fun here. This clip from Ted 2 is not very funny. Okay. But, and I'm not saying the film's not, I'm just saying that this clip is a strange one for anyone to say, I bet I know someone who would love this. Do you do cosplay? Do you do, like, Star, Star Wars cosplay? Star Wars I stuff? have to imagine that a detail that essential and germane would be included in the I mean, in the you'd hope, but they also didn't send along the, a link to the clip. Okay, second question. Do you have a fairly common name or username Ted like <laughs> Ted 2 fan yeah, yeah. XL, my name is Ted. fan XL for 2069 but if your like username is Ted like Ted 2 and foot guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> if your username is such that like it would easily be confused with someone else he knows named like Jake or something and maybe yeah. Jake is a huge fucking Ted 2 fan that's and he possible like the wrong one maybe possible. anything's possible online but now what you can't do, oh, it could crush your landlord's heart if you said like, did you mean to send this to me or was this for someone else? And there's your landlord like, I was just trying to, I was trying to open the gates. And yeah. I, no, I, it was a mistake. I, yeah, I didn't think I mean, you, it was I mean, maybe you hit them back with some of your favorite film clips from, and they don't always have to be, like maybe you start with some lighthearted, like some clips from Ted One to just like make your landlord feel comfortable. And then like, after a while, you send them a clip from like Kramer versus Kramer, and yeah. you're like, "This is what this this one's not funny." But it may. Here's a clip from uh, "Boy in the Striped Pajamas." It's not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. But I thought you would like it because, like, as a film buff, or just work your way back until eventually you get to like, here's a clip, and it's like a train coming straight at the screen. Don't freak out. It's yeah. not real. It's not, not a real, real train. Don't scream. But there you go. What do you think? That's all the clips from all the movies ever. That's every movie. My name is Jeremy Criterion. <laughs> and that's now, all the movies. Now you've experienced my collection in the way it was meant to be experienced. <laughs> now it's your collection. Now it's you your collection. You must take care of it so that I may die. You're the giver now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'd love that version of the giver if instead of Forbidden Memories, it was like, you gotta see, dude, you gotta see this clip from Shrek Forever After. <laughs> We they don't let you watch this one in school, <laughs> and for good reason. Um, dun 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 dun. Okay. Dun 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 dun. Yeah. Okay. But I want to munch squad. Now this is coming in. But I want to munch squad. It is fifty-two minutes and forty seconds recording it's okay. time. We so. can do those late. I know. That's why I wanted. To, this one isn't very big. Oh good. Yeah. I just wanted to quickly alert you to it. Oh, is it a plain tie-in meal? Is somebody doing like airplane jangles? Bojangles. You guys know Bojangles? Yeah. I know of them. It's a chicken restaurant that. When it opened in Huntington, they had to shut down part of Route 60 because everyone needed to get there. And then they built a second one and nobody went to either and they both closed. That's the story of Bojangles in Huntington. So they've launched an alcoholic sweet tea with Appalachian Mountain Brewery. Served in some store? Things just go, some things just go together. That's why Bojangles and Appalachian Mountain Brewery have partnered to brew the tasty beverage we didn't know we'd been waiting for. Bojangles Hard Sweet Tea. Okay. Two Carolina-born brands join forces to carefully concoct 2023's newest and best drink, <laughs> combining Bojangles' knowledge of expertly steep sweet tea and AMB's award-winning brewing innovation. The result is an easy-drinking, refreshing hard tea, sure to delight fans of both brands, ages 21 and older. Which sure. of these companies do you think is most likely to betray the other one? Because if they're coming into that, I've watched a lot of Succession. Right. right. They're coming in. One of them's bringing the knowledge of sweet tea. One of them's bringing the knowledge of where to buy alcohol. And you mix those together, right? So one of them is going to have to either try to take over the other company or steal their secrets or something. And frankly, I think Bojangles has the cutthroat heart of a killer. I think so, too. I was just thinking that. The collaboration represents a prominent new food licensing deal for Bojangles. With millions of loyal fans garnered over its 45-year history, the brand hopes to tap 
into a hard T, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, tap, got distracted, into, God. Yeah, the joke was so funny. Here we go. Tap <laughs> into fans' love of all things Bojangles with this new beverage. This collaboration is something sweet, says yeah. Jackie Woodard, uh, chief brand and marketing officer for Bojangles. Partnering with AMB to craft our legendary iced tea into a hard tea for fans of legal drinking age was a natural fit. And the team poured passion into the entire process. We can't wait for fans to try it. This is the second time in the press release they have felt the need to clarify that this hard alcoholic sweet tea is not for children. Oh, and the representative <laughs> goes on to say, uh, and we love how naive they are over at A&B Brewing. We're, we're really looking forward to them sharing their secrets with us and us taking their secrets from them. Those absolute sheep. <laughs> Bojangles sweet tea is a staple across the South, says Nathan uh, Kelishek, the A&B founder and brewmaster. And we trust A&B. them without fail. They would never hurt us. <laughs> they would never go behind us and steal all... all um, we're excited to continue to share our craft in innovative new ways. Bojangles hard sweet tea will be perfect for entertaining in the spring, vacationing in the summer, tailgating in the fall, and any occasion where you want to bring the fun. Don't fucking drink it in the Don't winter. Fucking, <laughs> no. you know it's winter now. Don't you fucking touch it. It actually, if it goes below 32 degrees, it becomes poisonous for human consumption. <laughs> Please don't drink it in the winter. And here, here's how it closes. It's always been bow time, and now it's also brew time. It's I would always argue been. It's been brew time Longer. since the times of ancient Egypt. Yeah, yeah, and it's been bow time for forty five years. Yeah, that's a huge difference. They have right. messed that up so completely. It has not always been bow time. Well, we don't. Oh, that they didn't have Bojangles in ancient Egypt. They may have called it something else. Yeah, the, at the Library of Alexandria, they might have had it there and then lost it. And then lost it, and tragically. And it's only been it recovered. Might, for the ancient Egyptians, It might Bojangles might have been um, a series of characters that depict a language yeah. with iconography. And Bird. they called it hieroglyphics, but yeah. it was still Bojangles. But it was Bojangles to them. It was, to them, it was Bojangles. It was a uh, bird plus sun. Equal crispy. <laughs> and they just had the sign for crispy drawn there. Yeah, sure. You get it. Uh, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you have uh, enjoyed yourself. Hope January's been treating you well. Um, it's cold here. Okay. That's a weird thing to say, Juice. Yeah, we don't no. do that ever. We never say, like, hope this period of time is good. But not doing it has brought us to here. That's true. Let's we get better. We have to try something. Yeah. Uh, coming out. Uh, in about a month at this point, the Taz 11th Hour graphic novel, uh, it's coming out February 21st. Uh, you can pre-order it. Don't wait now because there's pre-order special editions and uh, special things to get. Go to theadventurezonecomic.com. Uh, we have special editions with Barnes & Noble and Indigo and Books A Million. And you can submit your receipt at bit.ly slash 11th, all spelled out, 11th hour pre-order to get a lenticular sticker featuring art from the book. Uh, make sure you check out our merch store where we've got the Amnesty flame bright dice we've got the cornhole for your soul sticker we've got a there's a rudeness enamel pen and 10 percent of all merch proceeds this month go to races which promotes justice by providing free and low-cost legal services to underserved immigrant children families and refugees all of that at mcroymerch.com and don't forget we got one more uh like a little special uh 20 rendezvous fancy takes flight tour here in 20 sun and sea uh, April 27th, uh, we're going to be in San Jose doing Taz. April 28th, San Jose doing My Brother, My Brother and Me. April 29th, Denver doing My Brother, My Brother and Me. All existing tickets will be honored, but there are tickets still available. And mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID test within 72 hours of event start is required. Um, nice. Hey, thanks thanks to Montaigne for the Ustar theme song, My Life is Better With You. Um, that's a great, that's a really, really good song. It's a good I'm, one. I'm really happy that we it's are a really able to use it. Um, well, I, uh, speaking of music, I just put out all the music from the first season of, uh, Taz Ether C on my band camp and, uh, all, all album sales from all of Adventure Zone in the month of January is going to be donated to, uh, to, to Earth Justice, which is a really great nonprofit. So you should, you should go check that out, uh, also. Is that it? 
we came up with some way to end the show last week, but I didn't listen back. So it's I don't people remember. who are in uh, the Wild West, Code of the West, Boys of Mumesa. That was okay. That couldn't be. That couldn't be. Couldn't it. be that it. was it. Okay, Travis, who are we featuring this week? Okay, hold on. You uh, pulled this up really fast. Yeah, I was excited about it. I mean, it should be. It should be stated. Uh, because I did mention the character, but then did not mention the actor, uh, that a, recur- a recurring role on here was yeah. Tim Curry as Jacques Lebeef. Okay. <laughs> 25 episodes Mr. Cool. Curry appeared in. Wow. That might have been the entire run. I actually think that was the entire run. If you have Tim, you're going to use him every yeah. yeah. episode. So that was uh, Jim Cummings, a.k.a. Winnie the Pooh, alongside... Tim Curry. He played All both. St- sorry, they both played a role? Yeah. Jim Cummings, Dakota Duke, Tim Curry, Jacques Labeef. This is feeling like nothing, guys. Yeah, it feels like nothing. We need a different way to end the show. All right, cool. you guys do something. Come on. No, the new thing is we feature a new Tim Curry role <laughs> in every episode, so now we're already on track. Griffin, bring Thanks it for listening. The end. <laughs> We've earned that. We've yep. earned that. That's our closer now. Thanks for listening. The end. My name's Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking up facts about gargoyles. I know you fucking were. I know that's what you're doing. <laughs> it's been my brother. My brother we kiss your dad square from the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.